Hey everyone, welcome back to Indicted TV. I'm your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. On today's episode, we have Dank. <laughs> <laughs> Dank, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you grew up. Tell us how, you know, your parents, brothers, sisters, things like that. Well, I grew up in Watts, in, um, my mom and my dad are actually from my hood, you know, we're from Elm Street. Okay. And um, ever since I was little, a baby, just being from the hood was like normal to me. I thought it was everything that everybody does. Everybody had an uncle puppet or, you know, like the Abaspo or something. And that was just the way of life. And so growing up seeing them, obviously I wanted to be like them. Mm -hmm. And then so when it came about that time, about puberty, 13, 14, then... I started doing my thing and I jumped okay. off the porch. Well, I was like, wait, you jumped off the porch? Yeah. <laughs> Did you really jump off the porch? <laughs> Pretty much. So, um, at what age did you start getting in trouble? Really? As far as like, you know, if your first time going to juvenile hall, if you even did go to juvenile hall. To be completely honest, I've never even been to juvie or YA or none of that. Like. When I got locked up, it was my first, my first time, my first term. So you graduated from school? Did you no, go to school? I didn't graduate. No, I okay. dropped out. Okay. Um, but it's just, you know, I was, I was always smart about the things I did, you know? Like, so we I, like to say, right? I was never really into drugs or none of that or like stealing and stuff. So I try to do everything as smart as possible. Okay. Okay, so you were always in your right mind. Yeah. Since, you know, you don't have, you didn't go to juvenile hall or anything, what was like the craziest thing you've ever seen growing up? You know, you did mention that your parents were also gang, gang members. Yeah. What was like the craziest thing you've seen, if uh, that you could say, obviously? Oh, man. I mean, I just remember like being a little kid, four years old, five years old, being asleep in my room. And all of a sudden you just hear banging on the door and you know gunshots and stuff and my mom talking about go back to the room close the door and nothing's going on and it was just it was hectic and it was during the 80s and so oh yeah most you know, definitely especially up. in those years yeah, in watts exactly exactly yes yeah so i mean i remember one time my mom told me that um when i was a baby in a walker uh somebody came by and shot the house up and uh, one of my older homies dove and pushed the pushed the walker with me in it out the way yeah. So you're already going through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Without you even knowing you were yeah, going through it. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. So, so it's kind of all you. That's kind of all you knew was just the gang life, huh? Yeah, that's it. I was born into it. Uh, craziest thing you did as a teenager, that you could say. I mean, <laughs> if you you name it, I've done it. You've done it all. <laughs> yeah. All right. At what age did you catch your case? Because obviously you're an indicted TV, yeah. and you know it's prison story i didn't catch this case until i was about two weeks shy of my 25th birthday oh my goodness so yeah. you were already an adult yeah. an adult yeah can you tell us what you got incarcerated for they had got me uh for uh aiding and abetting to a murder robbery and so i wasn't the shooter but since i was there they tried me you know just as guilty as the shooter mm -hmm. and there were from day one they were like look man we know it's not you. They were like, tell us who it is and we're going to let you go right now. And so it's the Compton sheriffs. They try to do the good cop, bad cop thing, right? I guess they thought me being Mexican, the, the black cop was going to be the good cop. So he it looks straight like a movie, right? He comes in, puts his little portfolio down. He goes, look, man, he goes, you know, talk to me. I'm your best bet because my partner out there, you know, he doesn't play around, right? And I'm just looking like this can't be real. It looks like a bad movie. And he's like, He's like, yeah, man, we know, you know, a murder happened, this and this and that. Um, you know, you got anything to say? And I was like, oh, yeah, I do. And he leaned forward and he got his pen. And he goes, what? And I told him, I want a lawyer. And then he looked mad and he closed the thing and he took off and they processed me and they booked me for it. And I went through a whole trial and even. Let's, let's stop there. So you're 25 years old. Yeah. You've never been in trouble like that. You've never gone to juvenile hall. You've never gotten any, you never gotten busted, period, mm -hmm. right? 25 and then you're going to you get arrested for this big case. Yeah. Um, you 
walk in the LA County, I'm sure you've heard millions of stories from the Theos, your Theos at least, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Homeboys, um, how, how was your, how were you feeling? Um, you know, like, what did you, like, was it what you expected? Not that you're expecting it, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you know, like, what were you feeling, your heart, everything? Tell us how that was for you. Well, you know, since it was being my first time in the county, um, but like you said, I had all my uncles and older homies who've been there, so I kind of had a little understanding, but it's like once you get there, you adapt quickly. And when I got there, it was in 2006 in February, and it was the time when the second riots happened. And um, I'm there like not even a week, and then, you know, the homies are like, hey, he's just about to jump. And then I'm like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of like used to it, because growing up where I'm at, like every summer, there's always some type of racial tension and then it dies down. So I just try to adapt myself from being out there and putting it right there. But going through it afterwards and experiencing just that chaos and the fighting and the sheriffs coming with the block guns and the pepper balls and just the loud bangs. And then when they take you out to the yard and to discipline you, they strip you to your boxers and they leave you out there for overnight in the cold and like, that, that was crazy. That part was crazy. Especially you were just like barely getting there. Yeah, yeah. And then they threw my property away. That's yeah, they threw all our property away. It was bad. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, how long were you, you said you took your case to trial. How long were you fighting this case in the, you know, you're in the county this whole time? Man, this case, especially for a murder case, it went by quick, and, and I was busted in February. By like December, I was already hitting reception. Oh, so it was quick. Yeah, it was real quick, quick real quick. Uh, what was the craziest thing you saw in the LA County? In the LA County, oh, the most definitely the deputies. You know, whooping on homies, whooping on other races, just beating the dog shit out of them. Jeff. Yeah, for no reason, just for looking at them. Craziest thing you did. Oh, you know, the typical stuff, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You got sentenced. Like you said, we were like what, February, like mm -hmm. 11 months after you were already hitting reception. What, what was your sentence? My sentence originally was a uh, 28 to life. 28 years to life. Yeah. Ah. And even when I lost my trial, uh, they still try to offer me seven years if I were to tell. And I was like, the whole time, like, um, I wasn't even there. You know, you got the wrong person. Yeah, I, I yeah. I wish I could help you. Yeah. And that was that. So you ended up getting, like you said, you said how long? 28 to life. 28 to life. How long did you end up doing? I did almost 17 years. Almost 17 I've years. I've barely been out two months. Wow. Wow. I just got out. Yeah, super fresh. Um, okay, so you're hitting reception. You get sentenced. You're like, how, how are you feeling mentally? You know, you just got sentenced to all these freaking years. And tell, like, you know, tell us, how, by de you know, detail, how so you in felt, the beginning, emotions, everything. In the beginning, when I went to the county, you know, I mean, I'm 24, I'm about to be 25, still young, you know, so I'm like, man, I'm not tripping. I'm in the county. I'm with the homies, you know, I'm here. It's, it is what it is. And I just, I went full force with it. But then when I got sentenced and then you catch that chain, it kind of starts to sink in like, damn, this is it. And then I'm on the bus and I thought I was on the wrong bus. This is when Lancaster was still open for reception. Uh, everybody's all happy. And I'm like, damn, is this how it's supposed to be? Everybody's all happy. And come to find out everybody was all short term. And I was like, I, I actually thought I was on the wrong bus. I'm like, I'm literally the only one with life on this bus. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And so everybody was just happy and waiting to go to their fire camp or wherever. And I'm like, damn, I'm the only one with life. Like, I felt like a loser, you know, like, damn. So things were hitting. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, when you go to reception, you don't, you can't use the phone. Mail is slow. There's no program, no yard, no nothing. So you're just stuck in that cell. And yeah, reality starts to sink in quick. Like, this is it. Wow. Yeah. So you were in reception for like how long? About six months. That's pretty like a long time, no? Yeah. Back in the day, that's how long it used to be. In 2006, 2007, yeah. That is a pretty long time. So 
once you get released from reception, like how does that process go? Like, do you just have to jump a wall, or like you get sent sent to like a different prison? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so um, you talk to your counselor and they endorse you to whatever prison you're gonna go to. Obviously, everybody tells them I want to be close to home. You know, I'm from LA, I want to be close to home. Everybody says that. So, huh? um, they ended up putting me up for uh, Calipatria, and um, I ended up going over there, and and then yeah, that. Was, that lets you know you're really here. <laughs> and when you say that, what made you say that? Like, just like the first time experiencing a yard down. <laughs> like, tell okay, us. Like, tell us experiencing a yard down. I mean, what makes the yard go down? I mean, you're just there chilling, and then next thing you know, you just hear that that alarm going off with that loud blare. Like in the movies. And then so you look around, and then you see everybody hit the dirt and prone out, and then you see something going on over here, and then you're like, okay, it's real. Okay. And so then you have to always be like... How, how long after you got to... Uh, what did you say? Calipatra, yeah. How long after you got there did, that, did you see it go down? Oh, man, I was like literally like within the first few days. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, it hit yeah, you yeah. for sure. Yeah. Was, what was the craziest thing you saw? How, long, how many years were you there? Sorry. How many years were you at that prison? Man, I bounced back and forth right there from... Uh, BR to CR to the whole to A5 to ASU. I did like I did a stretch right there. And what was the craziest thing you saw? Uh, people getting killed, you know, all that stuff. Riots with the cops. So it's like a daily thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, like they'll come and they'll land the helicopter and airlift somebody out of there, you know, on life alert and resume program and go back to playing handball or basketball like it's uh, nothing. Like nothing, huh? Yeah. Craziest thing you did there? Everything. <laughs> everything. 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 Tell us a little bit I more. I mean, I, I, you know, all that stuff that you've already heard before, but I mean, I've, I've done my thing with, um, you know, some free staff and some COs and stuff. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I did a long time, but for, the, for like 15 of those years, I, I lived good, comfortably, you know? I didn't have to ask my family for nothing. I was supporting my family from in there. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I lived as good as possible as I could. Good. So that was your pastime? That cell phone was my pastime. So it was my, my life. Hey, cell phones are expensive, huh? The first one I ever bought was a red Virgin Mobile flip phone, and I bought it for 800 And then as the years passed by and technology caught up, we got uh, the touch screens. The first one I bought was a thousand, and then they started going up twelve, thirteen, fifteen hundred. Oh wow! But then once you start having the connect, then you're bringing them in, so now you're charging those prices, and now Is you're, you're making a nice living. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm assuming you had a nice little chunk of money when you got home. See, the thing <laughs> is, I come from the ghetto, right? So my family's not doing too well. So you couldn't you know, even save. If I send the money here or there. They're gonna find an excuse on why they need it, and so when, while they were spending it, I said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna spend it too." And so we just blew it all. It happens. Yeah. That's kind of a. I, I work like that sometimes. You yeah. Know? So with all these years, you know, you're down for 16 years. Did you use drugs while you were in there? Me, drugs was never really my thing, right? Like when I was on the streets, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I mean, I used to, I used to sell drugs on the streets. So sometimes, you know, I used to do coke to stay up to surf my customers and stuff yeah but then i would stop because that never was really my thing i was always about my money so when i went to prison i already knew from past experiences i had older homies i was like seven years old when one of my older homies overdosed and um my mom and dad they kicked the door down and run in and they're like turn the shower on turn the water on and someone's like get the ice cube and i'm a little kid pretending i'm asleep with my brothers i don't know what's going on they're like they're slapping the homie in the shower. I could hear it. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And they're talking about, you know, God oh, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I didn't know what it was when I was little, but I knew when I got older, I was never going to mess with that stuff. So for the, just real quick, for the people that don't know what carga is, it's heroin. Yeah. So when I got to the pen and I seen that that was like what everybody likes to do, I remember my older homie overdosing. And so I was like, nah, I'm not going to mess with that stuff. But you did experience other, seeing other people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a common thing. It's epidemic in there. But it's a way for, for people to escape, you know? Yes. Because you got people doing 20 years, 30 years, life without parole. 
So it's understandable. No, yes, most mm -hmm. definitely not, for sure. And um, how did you survive in there since you said that your parents, you know, they, you said, you know, they don't, they don't guide it like that. How did you survive in there? Well, I had, there was a homie right there from, uh, from Colonia Watts. And you know, you know when you get to, the, to jail, you know, you run with your homies from your area, you know, the valley or wherever you're from. And so I ran with the double S, obviously. And so the homie, he showed me, you know, this is how it is. This is the program. And then he put a little something in my hand and it helped me get on my feet. So I just adapted me on the streets, slinging, to now doing on the yard. And then once I did that, I took off like a rocket. And that's how you survived your 16? The whole term. Ah. Yeah. And obviously you saw the young ones, older ones. Um, did, did you see anybody have to like, you know, rolling it up for not being able to pay? Oh, yeah, yeah, things that like happened. that. Can you tell us a little, a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, sometimes because of the addiction, you get, you know, a little caught up and the addiction is, is longer than your money is. And yeah. now you're not able to pay. So it's like you only have two choices. Which is? Choice A or choice B and leave, you know? And sometimes people don't want choice A. Which is choice A. Do you know what choice <laughs> A is? <laughs> so yeah, so choosing B is leaving yeah. the yard. You're yeah. rolling it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have, have you seen anybody come back from choice B? To be honest, with choice B, the only people I ever seen come back uh, were the blacks. They got that option, you ah. know, they can do that. But as far as like homies, like nah, I've never seen that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but the blacks could do it though. Meaning they could like figure a way out to come back to the yard and be yeah. like the regular people? All they gotta do is sign off and they'll come back and they're good. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you experience riots? Yeah. Okay, you experience riots. Tell me a story, or tell me, it's not even a story, right? Tell me a time where you could like sit back and like, you know, you, you, you remember it's like, oh shit, it's just going down. And you're like, you're like there, like, I don't know, you know, wherever you were at and you're like, I don't know, like your movements, like how you were going, like everything, everything, everything. Yeah, I mean, I remember one time, because right there in that prison in Calipatria, um, like a couple years before I got there, the, de the COs had uh, killed one of the homies and they shot him in the building. And so there was always tension right there with the COs. So one time over there, it gets like about 120 degrees in the yeah, summer, all hot. summer long. So they're doing yard recall and you know, the, the COs line up on this side and on this side and then they pat everybody down going inside, right? So one of the COs, I don't know, he tried to like manhandle the homie and um, obviously he didn't like that. So the homie took off on the CO, and when the homie took off on the CO, obviously everybody else followed suit. Oh. And the homie started just whooping on, on, on the COs, and they literally dropped their equipment and started running for the gate. <laughs> That's a crazy one. I don't think I've, I've ever heard or even, even seen a movie yeah. of anybody saying that. Like, yeah, we're no, it, freaking it looked crazy out of when, here. when we seen it. It was like they literally just dropped their pepper sprays and batons and hit the gate. They realize their lives are yeah. <laughs> extremely at risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that one was, was unique. Yeah, that's a crazy, that's, that's, that is crazy. That is crazy. That's yeah. a crazy little experience. So what happened after that? Well, since there was no, we there, just, there was no more guards. We all just went to the hole, right? Like eventually we all prone down and they took us to the hole, but um, there was no repercussion. Like it's not like in the county, you know, like they know, you know, just leave it like that. Yeah. And then that was that. Well, because you say they dropped their stuff and they left. So other officers came down? Yeah, from other yards. Uh, like, when it, like there's typically like about four yards. And um, whenever the alarm goes off, they all respond from that yard. So there's like lots of cops. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they zip tied us with the plastic zip ties or whatnot and took us all to the hole. All of you guys? Mm-hmm. Oh. How long were you in the hole for? Uh, nine months. My what? first time. I was about to ask you. Nine months is a long time. What was the longest time you've done in the shoe? I did 16 months. 16 months. Um, what did you do 16 months for? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. I know. 
What did you do for your pastime? Did you See, when I went to the hole, they didn't give you no TV. They didn't give you no little transition radio. It was just you and your phone book with your addresses. And that was it. And so I wrote letters, told uh, the same story to my celly a hundred times. And he told me the same story a hundred <laughs> times. And we'll be bored and I'll be like, hey, Sally, tell me that story about that one girl that one time. I want to hear it again. And yeah. It's like watching reruns on yeah. the TV. That's what we did. They wouldn't give you chess pieces. You don't get playing cards. You don't get nothing. At that time, you didn't get nothing. Oh. Yeah. It was really, that's why it was really the hole back then. Yeah. Yeah. That is intense. For real. That was the longest. Then they used to put all your food and they would not let you have no plastic anything. So they'll give you the, like the market bag, the brown paper bag ones. They'll throw all your soups in there, stale. They'll throw your chips in there, stale. Everything in there would just turn stale. Your coffee would rock up. Like, it used to be bad. Back in, those, in, the day. in those rooms, you're saying? In, in your cell, yeah, in your cell. They'll just give you brown market bags with your store, like, out of the wrappers and everything. You're kidding, with, nah. like, mixed with the coffee and everything? No, no, no. They'll put it in separate containers. But since it's not sealed like this, it would spoil or go stale. Oh, that's yeah. whack. So I, like, and I would always have fat store. So I have like two, three hundred dollars worth of store and everything would just go stale. You didn't eat it all at once? Nah. <laughs> not. And there's no hot water. So you, you're hitting that sink button, flushing the toilet, trying to get the water hot. And, hot water, yeah. And they don't give you a bowl or nothing. So you're trying to use anything you can. Like, so what did you, so you, oh, so no, you don't have bowls. So how mm -hmm. did you eat? Um, what did they give you? I think they did give you. They gave you something, um, like a, I think like a chip bag, and you would use your chip bag as your bowl. <laughs> that is terrible. Yeah, yeah, it was rough. Yeah, that is extremely rough. Yeah. Wow. Was, those were the only times you've ever gone to the shoe? No, I've, for, been, I've been to the whole ball like four times. Six months here, nine months there. And 16, I know. Uh, different reasons, yeah, but yeah, mainly because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I did a month one time for a cell phone. Cell phones, cell phones were so big on the yard that they started implementing um, um, whole time for it and they'll give you 30 days. And every the, the hole got so packed, they stopped doing that. Because everybody would be back there for, what you here for? For a phone. Damn, everybody's here for a phone. Yeah, that's like dumb, Yeah. right? Where did you used to hide your phone? Everywhere, you, you get creative with it. Creative. I mean, there's only like so many places you could put it. Tell us, give us a few examples. Nah. Well, one, I'll, no? I'll tell you one because I mean, I'm not, sure they've been not, comp. It's not used anymore, but like when we used to have the flip phones, like they used to sell bars of soap, right? Like like a Jergens bar. So you used to cut the little Jergens in half and then hollow hollow it out uh. and then put it in. Like we got like 30, 40, 50 bars of soap, so we just put it back in the wrapper and we would do it like that. Menu. Yeah. But nowadays with the, with the, with the touch screens, they're real thin and they look big, but they're thin. So there's a lot of places you could put them. Oh. But the best place is not in your cell. There's places. Not in your cell. Yeah. But what about in yourself? <laughs> no, you can't, you're not putting no iPhone right there. Not, I'm, not go, I'm not gonna lie, those flip phones, people used to do that. But me, I have money, I could pay somebody for that. But you're ah. not gonna do that with no touch screen now. Oh, wow. You're a champ if you could do that. <laughs> have you ever heard of anybody hooping a fucking iPhone? No. <laughs> have you? You've done this? No. <laughs> Imagine. No, no. That's intense. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking crazy. So, you said you've, um, when you were about to get out, how was your, like, how was your experience? Like, did you already know? Um, did you have to go to board? Um, Okay. Did your, you know, did anybody ever try to like not let you go home? Okay, so like me, I did my whole time on the foyer, right? I'm not gonna like, I didn't do no groups, I didn't do none of that. Like, I kind of felt like animosity or bitterness because I was here for something I didn't do when you gave me life. So I was like, that's how you want to treat me? Fuck it, I'm gonna go full fledged with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to do no program, yeah, nothing. I got, I got write ups like this long for dumb shit, like not going to school not dress code, whatever it is, talking back to the CO, like, I didn't care. They used to put me on um, a loss of privileges, LOP, and take my TV and take all this, and I'll just go and buy a floater or get one from the homies. Like, I didn't care. You can do whatever you want. Like, I'm still here. And so... Did they pick on you more for that reason? Sometimes, but when you're on a foyer, 
because people got life and a lot of time, the seals know like these people got nothing to lose. So we're not going to really fuck with them that much, you know, so they leave you alone. But I came home because this law passed in 2019, right? It was called the uh, SB 1437, the felony murder rule, right? Which basically was saying if you were convicted of a murder, but you weren't the shooter, then you got action at coming home. And so in 2019, I did slow my roll on my activities, right? Because now shit's getting real. I got a possibility. And now I'm like, hold up. So yes. then I did fall back. And um, so I started, I didn't really program, but I chilled on what I was doing. And then little by little, I was having court dates without me being present, you know? And like things were- Just naturally happening. Yeah. Things were looking good. And then um, I go back to the county like in April, 2022. And like- it was still never a guarantee I was going to have a hearing, right? And um, the judge was going to decide whether or not if I fit the criteria for the bill. And um, this lady didn't like me to begin with, so I, I wasn't very hopeful at all, right? And so um, I'm stuck in the county for like six months, postponement. The county's wild. They got TVs all over on late night, and it's just like hectic, right? I'm stressed out. I'm in high power, right? I'm like, I can't do nothing. I'm like, oh, my God. And then finally, I get my last court date. And um, before I even, when I go out there, my lawyer, he's like, he's like, I could see he's amped up. And he goes, he goes, we already got this one. He goes, just be cool. And I'm like, okay. So the DA and my lawyer spoke and the judge spoke. And so then I go out there and I see my mom and she's the only one there. And I try to give her like the heads up, like, don't trip. We got this already, right? But I can't talk. So she really don't know what's going on. But then so the judge starts talking and she's like, you know, reading my case, reading my case. And she's talking about the situation. And um, she's like, so since uh, I wasn't um, a major participant in the murder, but I was a participant in the robbery, I'm going to vacate his murder sentence and I'm going to charge him with the robbery, which was uh, five years. But I had time served already because I have 16. So she was like, I'm going to vacate your murder sentence and uh, take away your life. And I'm gonna let you go home. <gasps> and then my mom started crying, obviously, right there. Oh my God. You know, and then, yeah. How did you feel? I felt like if it was like surreal because I didn't have no faith in that lady. Like, I know, to be honest, like, I never turned Christian in there or none of that, but I knew the only reason why I got out was because of God, you know? Amen. It wasn't her. It wasn't there because that lady did not wanna let me go. I know, I know God was the only reason, and I know that. He's seen within those last few years, the little change in me. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to give him another shot out there. And that's what happened. Like even now, like I'm not, even though I know I could pull up to the block, I don't like I pick and choose who I kick it with. Like, you know, you see, I brought my little homie right here, but I'm trying to show him, you know, like, you know, where I understand. Did that. even though you're still young, you know, I know about you, you know, like yes. we don't got to do that no more. Like, let's, let's get this money. Yes. You know? Like when I first got out, he took me to Santa Monica Pier, having been there in 16 years. Yeah. So you got out from court? You didn't even go back? To I didn't even go back to prison. They released me right there Good from the county. for you. Yeah, my mom was right there waiting for me. Ah, so two months. No, it's, I've, been, I've barely been out two months. You've been out for two months. And yeah. How do you feel? Like, what, what have, what's, how do you feel and what's been... How are you adjusting to like everything? Cause it's, bro, being gone for that long, it's, 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 you know, you get used to doing things certain ways and. No, like, no, you're right. I mean, I gained my freedom, right? Which is a blessing. But at the same time, like you said, now I'm back in the real world. And I mean, I've been gone so long, I don't have nothing, you know? Like, I mean, thankfully I had a support team, like homies I grew up with who now got their shit together. like. My homie Hector, he took me shopping and he bought me, he bought me everything I'm wearing right now. He bought me my cell phone. And then when he, he spent like two, 3,000 on me. And then when he took me home, he still put a couple hundred in my pocket. Aww. And like, like my cousin, I got a cousin, the same thing. Like I got a cool little group of friends and like, they helped me and out. And they have their own families and yeah. things like that. Like, oh, like a normal. Yeah, like my cousin, I went, uh, I went to his house. Um, he's like, the manager for like Dodge Chrysler Jeep, right? He's whipping a scat pack and all that, right? He came and picked me up and um, well, we go out uh, to San Bernardino where he stays and this fool ordered a limo and took me to the strip club and a limo and everything. Oh, shit. How put, was that feeling? He, he put 2,000 in my hand and was like, spend it all here. I wouldn't have spent shit, I would have yeah. kept it. 
He goes, don't worry about that. Nah, then when I got home, he gave me 500 cash. He goes, here, this is for you, cuz. And like, I'm, I'm blessed that I do have a good, for you. A good, good for network you. of people. Good for you. And are you already working? Like, uh, how are you? How are you programming in the real world? You never programmed out there, in yeah. there. Like, cause that's, it's, it's not easy. Yeah, no, I'm still adjusting, believe that. Big um, time. Like, it took me like three weeks to get my ID, right? Mm -hmm. So I go to the social security office, but they're like, well, you need an ID. So I'm like, well, damn, I'm waiting on that. So I couldn't get my social. So I had to wait for my ID. Then I got to wait for my social. So that all took like about, about a month and a half. And so barely now, I do got a job. Good. And so I'm going to start next week. Good. I, this is the best advice I feel like I could give you is you got to work so hard, be so tired. Not work so hard, like just be so tired every day that all you want to do is just come home and watch TV and just chill on the weekends, do, you know, go eat, whatever, like, so you could get off parole and everything's smooth, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because everything is always an issue as far as, you know, it's, and we get agitated, yeah. you know, because we want, we want instant gratification, yeah, yeah. especially because we're free now. Yeah. And when things don't go our way, we tend to like, oh, you know, you're mad every, you know, but don't get discouraged. Oh, Whatever yeah. you do, do not get discouraged because it's hard. You yeah. know, I've been out for like 12 years, 11 years or something. And I still feel like, well, now I feel like I'm just where I need to be. Yeah. It's not easy. So just stay focused and do not get discouraged. Yeah, no, I mean, no, just like you said, no, you're right. Because I mean, like you said, it hasn't been easy, you know, being gone for so long. And there is, you know, sometimes where I just be like, man, you know what, man, fuck that, I'm violated, you know, I'm going to yes, do this. No, or don't. I'm going to call my other homies up who knew I got out and was like, look, man, we're going to put this in your hand. Let us know how much you want. We got you. It's not a problem. And I was, you know, like, man, fuck it. I know I'm going to get paid that way and I'm going to get it quick. But then I was like, I don't want to go that route. You know, because you're, like, you're out. You got a chance. Like, and it's like, we have this kind of, we kind of had to look at it as in kind of we're still in there, but not in there because really like our lives, it's like we're very routineish. We get up, we live in our house. Sometimes we don't even leave. Like yeah. it's the same except that we're able to have different choices than being our own, be our own selves exactly. with chaos still. Yeah. No matter what, it's always chaos and yeah. it's always dramatic and it's always something. So we just have to accept it as long as you stay s straight and focused be good yeah you got to, you're out congratulations yes. that's fucking amazing right you feel like super fucking like yeah sometimes huh? i feel like man it was like a bad dream like a 16 year long bad dream like sometimes when i wake up and i'll just be like damn i can't believe i did all that time like that you shit. did it like fuck. you survived it for real you survived it you survived all of those <laughs> <laughs> for real yeah give us details from your first day of you getting out obviously you're leaving court your mom's there crying you probably are super overwhelmed tell us full details yeah okay well when the judge told me that i was going to be released i still didn't even get out till like three weeks later because they try to hold me as long as possible you know what do you mean like they they were mad that they let me out they didn't want to let me out what do you mean three weeks later like the, they so you went back to the county? Yeah, for three more weeks. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you didn't get released from the court. No, but, no, yeah, I got released from the county. And um, I'm there. I'm stressed out now. Now I'm like, man, what's going on? Like, I know I don't got no warrants. Like, I'm like, are they going to try to frame me for something? Or what's going on? You know, oh, now I'm yeah. tripping. And um, I'm calling. I'm having my people call the prison. Like, what's up, man? Like, oh, because then they're telling me, oh, you're going to go back to, to, uh, to where you were. And then you're going to release from there. And then my lawyer's like, no, you're going to get a release from the county. And so you were just all confused. Yeah. So I'm like, man. So then like at three, three in the morning, they're like, hey, man, roll your stuff up. And I'm like, ah. So I passed all my stuff out to the homies, you know. And I'm like, all right, cool. So then I get released and my mom's waiting right there for me. And like when I hit the car, it literally seemed like if I was just out there on the streets. I'm not even going to lie. Like it felt like I was just there. And then so we go home. We go to Hoover where we staying and um. She cooks me a meal. What'd you oh. eat? What was it? She made me taquitos, you know, my favorite. And we just, just kicked it, drank, you know, and just had a good time. Good. Yeah. Took good. a lot of pictures. Pictures is what it is. 
But the most thing I like the most about being out though, really, is seeing my nieces and my nephews that I never met before. And mm. like, I talk to them on the phone, FaceTime and stuff, you know, so they know me. But I like, actually seen them and like, I got videos of them like running up to me, like just bear hugging me and like, Aww. it's the best. No, for sure. And you're older now. Yeah. So things are, obviously you see things way different than when you were 25, even though you weren't like uh, lost yeah, yeah. on drugs or anything, yeah. you know, but you were still young. Your mentality is different, you yeah. know, and now you, you're free and you're older and it's like, shit. Do you feel like you're 25 though? Do I feel like I'm 25? <laughs> <Hell Because>, yeah. <laughs> I, look, I understand what you mean because I got busted when I was 25, right? Yeah. I'm 40 now. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I think I sometimes I kind of still feel like yeah. 25. No, that's real what they say. It's that, tough. that you, yeah, yeah, you, you, you are the age that you were when you got locked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's exactly how I feel. And my little homie would tell you, everybody would tell you. Because you look young. Yeah. I mean, I think you're older because <laughs> you're not, right? Yeah, but. yeah. Yeah, but I get that a lot. My, my family, though, would like to tease me. You're not young no more. Stop <laughs> acting like that. <laughs> But it's how you are. It's, it's yeah. you know, I, I understand. So how are you blowing up on Instagram and you've only been out for two months? Well, because when I was locked up for the majority of my term, I had a cell phone. And then obviously, you know, everybody outside and inside is on social media. So when I was on social media, I made an Instagram. And then I had, this was around the time when, um, when Shoreline started popping off. And then I started becoming friends with these dudes. That's how I met the homie. And um, like till this day, before I came up here, um, I was hesitant, right? Because even though I'm, I'm, I got a little buzz on social media, like I don't consider myself famous or influencer or none of that. Like I'm from the streets, you know? Yeah, and, um, you just got out. And, um, <laughs> and, and so, just got out. so I had to like, and like all my followers would tell me, go on the podcast, do this, do that, make your own YouTube. And I was like, that really not my thing. So I asked my homie Rob Vicious because he's legit famous. I'm like, look, bro, everybody keeps telling me this, but I don't want to ask your opinion because you actually do this for a living. But what do you do? I just do me, like, basically like my life, like in the cell or, you know, or, ah. and uh, I, really I just talk shit and people find that entertaining. Yeah. And so I told the homie Rob Vicious, like, what's up, bro? And he goes, he goes, bro, look, man, do it. He goes, believe me. He goes, you got a story to tell. He goes, you just be life with a smile on your face. That's he goes, right. get it out there. So I hit him up today. I go, hey, dog, I'm about to come out on this shit. He goes, yeah, and I'm not going to lie. I told him too, right, because I'm burnt, right? I told him I don't know which dank they're going to get. Are they going to get serious intellectual dank, or am I just going to go out there and be a J-cat? And then he goes, nah, dog. He goes, be intellectual for the podcast, but, 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 but cat out on your own social media. Nah, yeah. you, can do, you, can be your, yeah. you can be yourself, you know? Yeah, but like. Over the time, like, I, I met a gang, like, this little kid who used to smoke weed all the time, Peter 710, uh, he's, f like, fucking Wiz Khalifa blew him up, all type of shit, like, we used to go live all the time, and, like, just, I met a gang of famous people. That's cool. Yeah, I, the homie Pac-Man, you know, Austin the Pac-Man, that's my homie right there. His three-year anniversary just passed, like, that was my homie, like, we would never talk about rap or nothing, we would always tap in with each other, he would send me money on my books, like, that was really the homie. The, the day he died, I talked to him just the night before. I was just on FaceTime with him. Like, I'm still in contact with his brother. Like, I really be, like, when I have famous friends, they're not just people we follow on Instagram. Like, I really fuck with these people and shit. They're the homies. Basically, you're popular for showing the way you live in prison or, your, you know, your daily routines in prison. Yeah, like, basically just, you know, Showing, showing everybody that even though I'm in this situation with a life sentence, I'm not going to let it break me. And I'm still going to be myself and who I am. Yes. And then people like that and people just fell in love with it. And nice. I mean, I will wake up and I'll have all types of notifications. When are you going to go live? When are you going to go Wait, live? Did you, meet, did you have a lot of girls? I got them all patted on me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best question ever. Well, did you marry in jail? Man, look, I was engaged one time, right? And I didn't want to get married. <laughs> I didn't want to get married. So I volunteered to go to the hole that time. <laughs> oh, so you didn't even care for the visits? Uh, well, at that time I had life and lifers didn't have family visits. Oh. So I was like, what's the point of this, you know? So yes. 
I was like, nah, I'm out of here. Um, so you did all this time, this whole time you have cell phones. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your relationships. Man, being in a relationship in jail, I think, I mean, obviously uh, it's a lot harder than being in a relationship in the streets because, I mean, your girl assumes since you're in jail, you're available 24-7. And she doesn't understand that you have a program, you know? You but to... you didn't program, fool. <laughs> no, but like wake up, you know, go to yard, work out. So one time, you know, I put the phone away. I'm going to go to breakfast. I'm going to go to chow. I go to chow. Now, obviously, you know, she knows my routine. She knows what time I come back, what time I call. So by the time I come back, I pull the phone out the cut. And before it even, it's turned on all the way. It's vibrating uncontrollably, right? And so I pick it up. And I mean, this was way before Toxica was a thing. <laughs> this was the original, right? The original Toxica. She's like, where the, f who the fuck are you talking to? Why is your phone off? You, did, did you block me? How come I can't get through? I said, man, I was at breakfast. She goes, you come back at breakfast at 7.03 every day, right? And I'm like, well, damn, babe. I mean, I'm sorry if like the homie almost lost his life right now and I couldn't run over here and call you, but yeah, yeah. the yard just went down. Yeah. And she's like, I want proof. <laughs> she wants me to take a picture of the paperwork and send oh, it to Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Did you take a picture? I mean, I just, <laughs> I, man, I had to. <laughs> <laughs> that's my money on my books. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah but like, no, like. They want you to stay up all night with them and, oh my, what's the password to your Instagram and all this. Did you give anybody your password to your Instagram? I did have this one girl, right? Like, man, I met this chick, man, and um. Did she, they, and they all visited you? Yeah, most of them. Oh, Some nice. Of them, okay, yeah. nice. Because so, in jail, you either got, you got your real ride or die or you got a phone girlfriend. That's the girl that'll do anything on the phone but never come see your ass, right? I can't do that. We're not doing that. So I had this chick from Houston. She's originally from San Fernando, though, but she moved out there, right? And, man, she would drive all the way from Houston to come see me. Money on my books. She's down. Wh whatever I needed, right? You want to drink some white lightning? Here's a $100 cash app. Here, have fun, party. You want to buy a couple 50 balls of some weed? Go ahead. Like, she took care of me. And then when I was doing my thing, I would pay her mortgage. I'd right. pay her mortgage and buy her kids Jordans and stuff. You know, it went both ways. And so like her, a real relationship. Yeah. So her, I gave her my password. You got whatever. And she'll jump on my Instagram and start blocking girls left and right. And I had like 30 followers. And yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. So you said you have all of, you tattooed all of them? Uh, just the important ones. Uh, are they in your life still? No, they're not. Because unfortunately, like, you know, when you got a life sentence, I mean. Everybody does their thing. Yeah. Like, I'm so like me. Instead of being bitter towards them, I appreciate the time that we had and the things they did for me, you know? Like, them little years we had together, like, you was there for me when a lot of times I didn't have family or anybody else. So, you know, I'm not mad you at them. You see it in a whole different way, which is, yeah. which is, which is dope. And plus, I'm out here now. That's right. Just catch me in the streets. The little, when we were in the car right now, the little homie, he sees the roster. They're his age. <laughs> that is fucking bad. <laughs> this was happy. <laughs> Hey, I mean, I don't, I don't, to be honest, with the little clout off the IG, I don't have to hit up nobody. They blow me up. I don't, and they know I'm older. And you're two months out. Yeah, exactly. But you're 25, so it doesn't matter. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so did you ever really fall in love? While I was in there? I mean, you know, you got some homies who, who, who finesse, you know, and whatnot, and act like it, but then... I mean, yeah, there was, like, I mean, I'm not going to tat a girl on me just because she put money on my books. Like, nah, I really did, you know, legit have feelings for these people. And, like, yeah, I was in love with this one. She was cool. Like, she was, like, a, like the one closest I could say was, like, like, wifey, you know? Let me ask you this. If she's watching this, would you give it another chance now that you're out? Nah. Ah, oh, I don't look. I don't look back. Nah, because you want to know why? Look, this one right here, I told her. I told her, look, I, I got a hold of her. I go, I left her alone for a while because obviously I'm doing life, you know, nothing's new. But then when the new law passed, I hit her up. I go, look, man, this new law passed. I'm going to be coming home. And um, then whatever, because she was in a relationship, though, so I get it. But, um, you know, we lost contact. And I was, well, that's your loss. I'm out now. But what if she's watching now? Nah, that's all great. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to get blocked. <laughs> all bad. So we already know that 
everybody's using heroin, everybody's slammed back. Yeah. What other weird drugs or like, did you see people do? Perk 30s. Nah, I'm just playing. Uh, you said what? Perk 30s. Oh, that's nah. Um, well, look, one time uh, the Bloods had it, came through with some Sherm, and uh, there was this big old shock collar, right? from Swans, you know, I'm not gonna say his name, but the homie was like about 6'4", about 300 pounds, right? Deep yeah. voice, walk real slow, right? And uh, he, <laughs> he said he walked real and he slow. And he come to my cell, he like, dang. He go, blood, you from Watts. I know you fuck with that water, right? I'm like, man, I, I used to. <laughs> I said, but not no more. He goes, man, I got a stick for you right here. I said, man, I'm good. I'm not about to be in this cell wigging out. <laughs> he goes to his cell, and our cells were across the tier, right? I'm in A section, he's in C section, and he's the Mac rep. So he comes out all the time, right? He's a what? The Mac rep. What is a Mac rep? He basically like the mouthpiece for the blacks. Every race okay. has their own Mac rep. So they call it Mac rep. Uh huh. Okay. So he comes out, and um, I could already tell he's high because he's moving slower than normal, right? <laughs> Big old dude for real, shuffled his feet, right? So he's walking the top tier. And by the time he hits the corner of the B section, he starts swaying back and forth, right? And I tell my celly, I'm like, hey, fool, look, dog. I said, look at the homie. Man, he's about to go out right now. And sure enough, that he went straight backwards in slow motion and hit like a tree in the woods. He hit so hard because he was so big, I swear I felt the tear shake, right? And the CO is right there looking at him. He sees him, right? The seals watch everything. They know what's going on. Yeah. So, and they could smell the sherm and no, shit, No, you could right? definitely smell so, that. So he's looking and he's eating his little policies and shit. And so he sees them and then he goes down and then like, man, that dude was out. He, they thought he died because he hit his head so hard. And so then when he gets up, he just, he's still high. He's looking like, man, what just happened? <laughs> like, no idea. Bro, he just went out. Yeah. Yeah. Intense. yeah. And then one time this, um, this white boy, he overdosed. And so they came and they hit him with the Narcan, right? And he jumps straight up and he's like, what happened? And the nurses and the SEALs are telling him you overdosed. And he still got the thing in his arm, right? He goes, that's impossible. I don't even get high. And everybody just started laughing like, bro, this was burnt out. <laughs> yeah, with the needle in his arm. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. So you always have your cell phone, obviously, right? You're going live, you're all fucking cool, right? Showing every, showing everything, right? Did you ever get caught on live? <laughs> I only got caught one time. Well, I've been caught multiple times, like, where they run up on me, and then I have to flush my phone and stuff. But, like, I got caught actually on live, and, like, I'm always on point, right? Like, when I'm in jail and I'm on my live, even my followers be like, Oh, why is his eyes keep going like that? Why, what's he looking at? And then my other followers were like, he's keeping through, you know, he's watching out for the huda. And so one time I'm just in the zone on my life. I put my phone by my TV and I stand it up and I'm just right there. I'm just doing my thing on my life. And out of nowhere, I just look and I see the fucking CO just standing right there, fucking staring straight in. But he don't see the phone because I got it in the cut, but he sees my mouth moving. <laughs> so he goes, what's up, man? What are you doing? So I'm watching TV, man. What are you doing? And he goes, oh, yeah? I said, yeah, man, I'm listening to music. He goes, I don't hear no music. I said, well, because I don't have speakers. This is my CL20s. And he goes, oh, yeah? He goes, what you doing in there? And I'm like, fuck, man. And then everybody's commenting, oh, fuck, the hoodas are there. The hoodas are there. I'm reading the comments, right? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, fuck. And the fucked up thing is, this one's not even my phone. I rented it. Oh. So if I get it taken, I have to pay for that shit. And at this time, this is past 2019, so I don't have no money to pay for this shit. So... I'm like, man, if this fool comes in here, I'm about to get off on this fool. So I go to the door and I go, look, man, what's up, man? I go, you're doing mail call, dog. I go, you don't got no mail for me. I don't get mail. I go, so this is a social visit. So what do you want? He goes, man, what's up? What you doing in there? I go, man, I already told you what I'm doing. He goes, what you got in there? He said, man, I don't got shit in there. He goes, what do you got in there? I said, look, man, I got, some, I got a bucket and I got some apples because you're not supposed to have buckets. And, you know, apples are for Pruno. Ah, OK. I said, I, said, I got a bucket and I got some apples. You want it? He's like, yeah. So he tells the tower to open up the cell. And I'm standing right there. I'm like, damn, this fool tries to come in. I'm about to take off on this fool, right? I'm close to going home. So then I give him the bucket. I give him the apples. He goes, you got anything else in here? I'm like, hell nah. He goes, you sure? I said, hell yeah. He goes, you don't got a charger? 
I said, for what, like my Walkman? I said, I got a charger for my CD player. He goes, I saw. I said, yeah, man, I saw. And then his partner, thank God, I don't know where his partner was taking the shit or something, but if his partner was there, I think he would have came in. But oh, because he's not allowed to go in by himself. Yeah. So, so he was just like, he's like, we're going to have a talk later. And I was like, all right. I was watching you live. So, he, so then he left, and then the homies called in the van. And they're like, hey, what's up, dang fool? What's up, man? He goes, damn fool, you got caught slipping on. I said, yeah. Like, man, you want us to shoot our line? Psh, man, hell yeah, please. And they shoot their line, and I put it on the phone. I'm all shaking now. And I'm like, <laughs> I put that shit on the phone, and they fucking, I knock on the wall, and he pulls it and shit. And I'm just, now I'm waiting for them to come up. And then, so now the owner sends a trustee to come grab it. And I'm like, oh, hey, grab it from the neighbor. And he's looking like, what the hell's the neighbor got the phone for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a whole other <laughs> story, yeah, too, but, huh? Yeah, but one, something crazy. After that happened, it's like if me and that fucking CO shared some type of secret because after that, he was cool as fuck with me. And the first time I met him, I cussed him out and I called him a bitch and all type of shit because I had just had got a fresh tattoo and he just started, he was a rookie trying to throw his little weight around and yeah. he tried to tell me to put a shirt on and cover up the tattoo. I'm not covering this shit up, you're gonna be fucked up. And he was like, well, take it in the cell. And I was like, oh man, you a bitch. He's like, what you say? I said, man, you heard me, man, you a bitch. And then I went in and that's the same one that caught me on the live. I thought for sure it was over. Oh, yeah, you thought you were going to get in a fight for yeah, sure. Yeah, but hell no, nah. he was cool afterwards. He'll give me a little extra shit and like... Did he give you back your apples? Nah, hell no, nah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. You know how hard it is to save apples? <laughs> no, it's hard. Hell yeah. That's funny. So I'm assuming you made Pruno a lot of times. Look, my cousin, my cousin, he don't fuck around no more, right? But he still got his ear to the street, so... He comes, picks me up, going to take me to eat, and he looks at me, and he goes, so I heard you made the best pruno on the yard. And I told him, out of all the shit I've done, that's the one thing that, that you heard? He goes, <laughs> he goes, your pruno, he goes, I heard about it. <laughs> so he made you make, did he make you make some? Nah, I still want to do a batch. I haven't done one yet, but I do want to do one. Ah. Yeah. You know what's crazy? All my, all my girlfriends, because I'd be on FaceTime with them, and I would drink pruno and shit. And they'll be like, oh, babe, when you get out, I want you to make me some of that. And they want me to make them that shit. Make some. I, I am. I am. I'm going to put out my Instagram. So I'm going to do a TikTok tutorial. Yeah. So for the people that don't know, what is Pruno? Pruno is basically just um, wine made in gel. Wine made in gel. Yeah. Did you ever make some? Well, they said you were the best, the best, the best maker, right? Yeah. Do you want to tell us how you made yours? Yeah, it's actually a simple recipe. I mean, it's all just mother nature. The same way they make wine or, or anything else, you know? I mean, you got to get some type of fruit, oranges, apples, you know, whatever, plums, pears, whatever they're giving in the kitchen, you save your fruit. And you need about like 40 apples or oranges to make a gallon of pruno. And a gallon of pruno is going to get you and your celly faded. Only. Yeah. So if you want to get the homies faded, then you need more than that. But it's, it's, a, it's a process because you have to fucking grate all them apples up and turn them into mush. And then when you get into mush, you got to put it in a pillowcase and strain all the juice. And then once you strain in the juice into a trash bag, then that pulp you get, you got to pour that into the trash bag. And then you close it and then you wait for, the, for that pulp to get rotten and you let it fermate or whatever that shit's called. And it blows up. And then once it blows up, you got a kicker and now you're ready to go. So you put, I put half my sugar. They don't give you sugar in gel, so you have to use whatever has sugar. I use jelly. Everybody else uses something different, you know, cookies, the filling from the cookies or ketchup. I use jelly. So I'll put about 40 to 80 jellies and then you just pour it in there. It's going to blow up like a beach ball. You have to air it out or burp it and then you tie it back up and then it's going to blow up. And you just let Mother Na Nature take its course. Once it's done blowing up, you know it's ready. So then you pour it back into a pillowcase and strain it. And then you can either keep the kicker and use it again, or you could throw it away and start from scratch. But that liquid is gold. You're ready to go. You're about to be fucked up. Drunk. And to be honest, I've been telling the homies and shit, swear to God, since I've been out, I've been drinking Hennessy, Patron, Douce, whatever, and I drink. I do not get hangovers at all. And I think it's from drinking white lining and pruno that whole time. I'll wake up every day about four or five o'clock and I could get shit faced drunk and 
I'm good to go. No hangover. So you still wake up early? Yeah, oh yeah, I program early. Yeah. Yeah. What is the difference between white lining and regular Pruno? So the difference really is um, the Pruno is just the, the, the juice, right? And then um, the white lining is more concentrated, right? But you have to do a whole nother process to get the white lining. You have to make a stinger with, yeah, and you put it in the bag and then you put another bag and you put a little tube like this bottle. You'll cut this part, this part, and put it on one piece of the bag and this bag. And while it's cooking, the fumes are gonna go through here into this empty bag. And then all that condensation is gonna add up and you'll get you some stuff like this and that'll be your white lightning. And it's like hard liquor basically. Oh, And shit. that shit's gonna get you faded. Just that little bit. Yeah, yeah, that'll get you right. And where did you have to, where did you hide it? Like, how did that work? You hide it. You could, um, you could just put like Kool-Aid in there and then it just looks like Kool-Aid. No, I mean like while you're... Oh, while you're cooking? It's kind of hard. I mean, you just, hopefully you're in the right place where the CEOs don't trip on that shit, you know? Because I have my cell search plenty of times and they'll leave my Pruno right there and they'll just take little random ass shit. Like, I've been fortunate that the CEOs wouldn't trip That's good. on me. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Because as long as you get drunk and you don't act up and shit, then they're going to leave you alone. They're like, oh, that fool just likes to have a good time. Leave him alone. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's playing pinochle all day in the day room. Yeah. Play, drinking and playing. Yeah. Just not causing chaos. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Have you ever seen somebody get drunk and do some the stupidest thing? Yeah, you see just people like, you know, I mean, just like a typical drunk out here, you know, you just fucking see them out there and they're just acting the ass, making a fool of themselves, you know, talking shit to the CEO, talking shit to uh, other inmates or whatever. Did people get checked for that? Uh, it depends on how far, you know, it went. Like, as long as you're not disrespecting anybody, then you're good, you know? Okay. But yeah, yeah, not, not really. Actually, I've never seen, oh, okay. seen that. So you've been out for two months super different from 16 years ago because it really is is there things that you see that are like not acceptable that you know guys do out here or wear or whatever that is not acceptable in there really like me personally the thing that I see the most is just like man everybody like to me is like dirt bags out here like, I go to people's houses and, like, I haven't been to one person's house that the bathroom isn't dirty. I'd be like, hey, can't use your bathroom? But, like, oh, yeah, it's dirty. And, like, that's common. I'm like, damn, you guys don't clean your bathroom or what? Like, everybody's busy. Just everybody, <laughs> like, laundry and shit. Like, me, even till now, this day, like, like, right now, I got a load of laundry going on right now at the house. Um, I can't let my laundry go no more than seven days. Like, to, for me to have, like, a hamper of dirty clothes still to me is like, man, that shit's dirt bag, bro. Wash that. And like, I gotta wash everything. I gotta have everything still neat. And like, I'll go to people's houses and that shit look like they got a cell search. That shit's thrown everywhere. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, just that really. Hopefully you continue thinking that way because once you're out long enough and you're like working and you're working yeah. and you're working and your clothes start piling yeah. up, don't call yourself a dirt bag. Yeah, <laughs> nah, for real. No, cause like even, even now, like when I go to either home or to someone's house like I still wash my own dish like whatever I use my plate my fork even though there might be a pile of dishes I wash my own yeah. shit because that's just still how I am you yeah know? yeah yeah that's the proper way it's it's called manners you know <laughs> yeah so nothing like weird or out of pocket nah like because really I mean it's not like how the movie says you know like how it's all fucking racial and shit like that i mean obviously there's certain stuff you can't do but at the end of the day like i mean Everybody we're all there we all got to be there for a long ass time and shit and especially like me coming from watson and shit i mean i'm gonna run into blacks that i know you know so i mean of course i'm gonna chill and have stories with them and, and you know kick it and shit but um of course there's other shit you know obviously yeah you're not gonna yeah yeah do. yeah 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 but no nah, it's not really like that everybody's courteous and respectful in there and if something happens, it's, it's never personal, it's just business. Yeah. And once it's over, we all program again. Okay. So, besides the Pruno, besides the heroin, besides the PCP, <laughs> what else were people getting high on? Before I left... Two every, months ago. Everybody was... Yeah, exactly. Everybody was fucking with that fucking spice. You know what that is? The fake weed. Yeah. Everybody. 
And them dudes would fucking hit that shit and start wigging out. I one time I'm in my cell and I'm just watching TV and I go to the door because I hear the CO keep yelling. And there's this black dude wigged out on spice. And I swear to God, this dude is on the floor doing the backstroke across the day room. <laughs> Literally. And I call my cell. I go, hey, fool, trip on this fool dog. And this fool was fucking wigged out, fucking doing the backstroke across the day room. That off was that shit. It. No, yeah. the spice is no joke. Yeah. The, this show's about you, right? This episode's about you, but I'm going to share a little quick story about my experience with spice right so I'm, i just got out too right there in the halfway house yeah i'm in miami because okay. i got out and i moved to miami okay i'm in the halfway house i'm here you know people are smoking the spice because obviously you can't fucking you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> this was intense for me this is really hits different it's like i forgot what oh, you I, hit that shit? no yes i hit it right <laughs> it's like i forgot where i was at i asked for i, I got high whatever and then i said Hey, what streets am I on? Like, like, like if I'm back in LA or some shit, like, you're in fucking Miami. Like, what are you thinking? It's like, I just, I don't even know what happened. I pissed on myself. I thought it was a game banger in a, from LA in Miami. Just with, I don't Tripping. even know. Yeah, like, well, what blocks am I on? Like, what does that even matter? Yeah, that spice shit is no yeah. joke. Yeah. Guys, do not smoke the spice stuff. No, nah, yeah, there was this one dude wigged out too. He was climbing up the fucking top tier and hanging off the bars from the top tier and like yeah, wig. yeah no it's like intense it's like not cool yeah yeah don't try that at home yeah. guys oh fucking one time the fucking homie this fool was fucking so smacked back and it was day room recall and this fool jumps in the shower right because he wanted to take a shower and his cellies over there right our, ourselves next to the shower so i'm like hey what's going on what's up with your celly he goes, oh, this fool thinks he's taking a shower. So I look, and he's right there showering, but there's no water on, and he got his clothes on. And we're like, hey, bro, let's go. We got to go back to the cell. He goes, I'm showering right now. I'm showering. And he's legit thinks he's taking a shower with his clothes on and no water. Wow. Yeah. I was like, damn, that shit was crazy. And the next day, everybody was, yeah, clowning him like, damn, fool, you're tripping. Do they, when they snap out of it, how do they react? I like when you tell them, like, it doesn't even matter, huh? They don't even get embarrassed no more because it's normal to them. Ah, you know? yeah. And showers, since we're, they, we're talking about showers, did you guys have, like, a time? Did you have, like, a specific, like, a, a, a shower period time? Not like, oh, you go to shower at 12 to 5. No, like, is it 15 minutes, 10 minutes, so you could shower as long as you want? Man, some places, they do trip. They'll tell you, you got five minutes, and some prisons can control the shower, so them five minutes, they mean five minutes. They'll turn it off. And they'll turn that shit off. Uh, That's why a lot of homies will just bird bath. I'm bird bath. I'm cool with that shower. Bird, for the people that don't know, what is a bird bath? A bird bath is like, you know, everybody's seen the little stainless steel toilets connected to the sink. So you just fill up your sink and then you stand over the toilet and you just pour water and you shower like that. And then you pick the water up with a towel and just wring it out until there's no more water on the floor. I bird bath. I don't can't even remember the last time I even took a shower in the yard. Oh, really? Yeah, I bird bath all the time. I think it's like a thing, huh? Yeah. How do you... So you didn't shower in, you didn't take a regular shower in there? I sent video so, to my girlfriend's bird bathing. Put the little phono right there. When you're in that you've been out now, you don't you, like you didn't have to shower you didn't shower with your shower shoes or anything like that so i'm not gonna lie it felt weird taking a shower with no shower shoes and touching the bottom of the bathtub or whatever like that's still stuff that i still get used to like i still walk around the house i won't walk around the house barefoot or in my socks i got you know slides yeah you have to yeah that's like probably the hardest thing to break is not yeah. wearing shoes yeah what's the what's been the hardest thing to adjust to, in these two months really it's just been stability you know yeah that's it but other than that like i'm telling you i got a good you know network of people with me, so i'm fortunate good for you good for you good for you that that's definitely uh, the one of the biggest things to help yeah you know just having a good supportive system yeah all right well 
Thank you for coming, Dank. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, congratulations on beating life with a smile, right? <laughs> um, would you like to share anything else? Nah, I just want to give a shout out to my homie Hector and my, hom my cousin Jason and to my homie Rob Vicious and shit. You're the reason why I'm right here right now. Yeah, shout out to him. Thank you for watching Indicted TV. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And follow us on Instagram.